the next few months, as I wind down my regular duties here on Greater Boston, I'm going to be talking to people we've had on the show before. People with extraordinary skills and special perspectives, and people who've elevated the discourse of the show over the years. Call it a Greater Boston version of Emily's List. And first up is Wendy Kaminer. She's here because she never fails to speak her mind honestly and openly, even when her way of thinking is contrary to popular opinion. Wendy Kaminer is a lawyer, social critic, and author who writes for publications like the New York Times, the Atlantic Monthly, and the Village Voice. Welcome back to Greater Boston, Wendy Kaminer. Thank you. It's always good to be here. So we, before we get into some of the topics of the day, to what do you attribute your mental acuity, your sharpness, your point of view? <laughs> I'd have to say um, <laughs> my genetic inheritance yeah. to begin your with. Your parents? Yeah. Um, my, uh, I was very close. I was close to both my parents. Uh, my father especially uh, rewarded me for being independent, mm. speaking independently. Really? When I was in the seventh grade and I refused to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Ah, oh, because that didn't happen that much back then. Yeah, my, my mother came to school to defend me. She mm. was very good. She was always coming to school to defend me. But she walked into the principal's office where I was sitting and she said, so say the pledge, what would it hurt? I used to say the <laughs> Lord's Prayer when I was in school. Yeah. And she turned to the principal and she said, just ignore her, she's only trying to aggravate you. Yeah, which she's been doing for the rest of her life. Right, but um, <laughs> when she told my father about it, yeah. he, I could tell that he was proud of me. Really? So it's a combination That's of good. things, as it is for all of us. And all, it is, it is. It's great. So I want to just talk about a couple things that are going on today and get your take on it. I mean, I find myself getting annoyed over the, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, this whole thing about the women's vote. Do you think there is a women's vote? Oh, I think there season? is you a do? women's vote. Um, and I find it annoying as well. I get several emails a day asking me to support female candidates hmm. because they're females and I'm a female hmm. and we're all supposed to stand together. And I don't vote on the basis of sex. Hmm. You know, it, all things being equal, I might. Yeah. choose a, a woman Which over a man. Which is what they're going for. But all things but are you never think, equal. You actually think there is a women's vote. That's interesting. Oh, I do think there is a women's vote. Mm -hmm. um, I think they know what they're doing when they send out mm -hmm. these emails and they gin up um, support or opposition to someone mm -hmm. because, you know, because Charlie Baker calls a reporter sweetheart. Oh, yeah, we have that. Listen right. to this. I, I cringed for him. Well, let me he hear it. That. Let's hear that. Charlie Baker called uh, Sharman Sacchetti Sh right. of Fox uh, sweetheart. Here it is. Okay, this is going to be the last one, it's sweetheart. the last one, no, sweetheart. Go. I'm kidding. I didn't think that was so bad. I didn't either. I mean, I, I understand it's annoying, it yeah. can be patronizing, but I also understand how it happens. Mm -hmm. And I, I think people need to understand what campaigns are like. Mm -hmm. They're extremely chaotic. Um, you're always talking. Things fall out of your mouth sometimes. I mean, I certainly know that things <laughs> yeah. fall out of You'd my mouth. You'd be great. Mouth. She'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> with, with a lot of yeah. frequency. When uh, Baker, for example, was uh, chastised for not immediately saying that Roger Goodell should resign, mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, it's quite possible that he hasn't had time to read all these news stories. Mm. He hasn't re that he yeah. hasn't been well, focusing yeah, exactly. on the NFL. He's running a campaign, yeah. and exactly, yeah. we're not electing an overseer of the NFL. It doesn't really matter what they think about the NFL. Now, I understand how the symbolic value of this issue, um, but. I don't think the fact that Charlie Baker didn't immediately offer an opinion about Roger Goodell means that his policies are going to be mm. bad for women. I think that is an idiotic mm. equation to make. You know, I went back and read a couple of the pieces you've written. I mean, you've been on the, by the way, you were on the show when it first debuted in 19, you were on in February of 98, it debuted in 97. And you was were that when we were at a, a round table? Yeah. Well, no, that was the group. That, that was, was something group. else. That was the group. Yeah. That's so right. anyway, I think you were on talking about Bill Clinton and Paula Jones and all that. But one of the things where you've been most outspoken has to do with this willingness of Americans to give up civil rights in, in the name of freedom. I mean, you know, well, you'll, you'll give up something for, the, for, 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 pri for uh, protection, I should put it. People giving up civil liberties yeah, in yeah. the name of security. In the name of security. Safe. Yeah. And what is especially troubling to me nowadays, you know, putting aside all the excesses of the war on terror mm -hmm. and the surveillance state, uh, even apart from that, which is, of course, a huge problem, is the increasing, almost hysterical hostility to free speech that mm -hmm. we see on the nation's campuses. And this notion that safety is not simply a matter of physical safety, that you're safe, you're only safe when no one is offending you. Mm -hmm. And that you're, 
you are so fragile psychologically and, and psychically that uh, you, you can't hear certain words. We have this growing lexicon of words that can only be known by their initials. Um, oh, I know. That you can't yeah. hear disagreeable ideas yeah. because they, they intimidate yeah. you, they make you feel unsafe. Yeah. So now we have, you know, the students at Wellesley College, we talked about this yeah. a few months ago, who uh, wanted removal of a partially oh, nude male statue. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we seem to be, especially feminism, we mm. seem to be regressing about 100 years. And you felt years. that way about that, um, the, in California, they had that, uh, the affirmative, everybody, everybody had to agree before, it was some oh, the, statute the, they wanted to put. these ridiculous affirmative consent uh, rules. About sex. Uh, yeah. Yes, you know, I think that we're also going through a period of hysteria about alleged sexual assault. Now, so you're, you're skeptical about how severe that really is? No, it's not that I'm, uh, you know, I, I, it's not that I'm so skeptical about the existence of the problem. Mm. I'm very concerned about the approach to it because mm -hmm. partly in reaction to the fact that schools did cover up a lot of mm -hmm. assaults, that there were some terrible cases involving student athletes um, where there was no remedy for the victim. Now we have a lot of pressure coming from the Obama administration, coming mostly from Democrats, but there's a little bipartisan support for this, to uh, take every alleged victim's claim at face value, to always believe someone who claims that she was the victim of an assault, to set up procedures that deny the students who were accused of assault any semblance of due process, to set up kangaroo courts on campus. Mm. And it's, it's very dangerous. And the, the, the next thing that they want to do now is, is actually have laws. This is what they did in yeah, California. Right. They passed a law. Mm -hmm which will apply to college campuses and requires that when you're engaged in a sexual encounter, you have to have an explicit yes every step of the what way. You get out of contract? Well, really, and you know, and, I, and Gloria Steinem um, co-authored an op-ed in the New York Times supporting this, and the New York Times editorial board came out in favor of this, and yeah. I thought, I'd really like to know if, if, if these grown-ups who have, you know, active sexual histories, have complied with these rules mm. in their own encounters. I doubt very much they have. So yes or no? Have you ever voted Republican? Yes. Really? Who was it? Uh, Elliot Richardson. No, no, no. In, in the um, <laughs> Republic, I voted, I'm, I'm unaffiliated. She did, okay. That's I, all we needed to know. I voted for Ron Paul oh, in the okay. Republican yeah. primary in yeah. the last presidential. Yeah, I also sometimes vote Quirky Libertarian. Republican. I voted for I Gary Johnson in the last presidential race. <laughs> that I could have guessed. <laughs> all right. Wendy Kaminer, thanks for being here and being part of Emily's List.